The Proto-Indo-European language family represents one of the most essential and intriguing fields of historical linguistics. Through meticulous and comparative analysis of Indo-European languages, linguists have reconstructed a hypothetical proto-language known as Proto-Indo-European, considered the theoretical common ancestor of languages spoken by ancient Indo-European peoples. This reconstruction not only illuminates linguistic history but also offers valuable insights into ancient human migrations, cultural interactions, and the dissemination of ideas over millennia. This text aims to explore the main aspects of this fascinating language family, from its reconstruction to its global influence. Delve deeper and provide more details. The quest for the origins of Indo-European languages marks an important chapter in the history of comparative linguistics. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, scholars began to notice notable structural and lexical similarities among apparently unrelated languages such as Sanskrit, Greek, Latin, Germanic, Slavic, and other languages of Europe and Asia. These observations inaugurated the field of comparative linguistics, leading to the recognition that these languages shared a common ancestry. One of the first linguists to significantly contribute to this discovery was Sir William Jones, a British philologist, who in 1786 observed that Sanskrit, Greek, and Latin shared structural similarities that could not be attributed to mere coincidence. He proposed that these languages derived from a common ancestral source. Rasmus Rask, a Danish philologist, furthered these observations by including Slavic and Germanic languages in his analyses. Building upon these pioneering insights, Later linguists such as Franz Bopp and August Schleicher developed more elaborate theories about the Indo-European proto-language. Bopp, in particular, published detailed works systematically comparing Indo-European languages, identifying regular correspondences in vocabulary and grammar. He laid the groundwork for the comparative method, which became the cornerstone of Proto-Indo-European reconstruction. The comparative method involves analyzing the phonological, morphological, and syntactic systems of modern Indo-European languages in search of recurring patterns. By identifying regular correspondences between linguistic systems, linguists can infer what the linguistic patterns were in the ancestral proto-language. These correspondences provide valuable clues about the structure and evolution of languages over time. Beyond similarities in basic vocabulary, such as words for family members, body parts, and numbers, linguists have discovered more subtle phonological and morphological correspondences. For example, Certain systematic changes in consonantal sounds and word endings are consistent across various Indo-European languages, indicating a common origin for these linguistic patterns. Proto-Indo-European reconstruction is not a static process but a dynamic field of research. With advances in technology and linguistic methodologies, Linguists continue to refine our understanding of this ancient proto-language and the cultures from which it emerged. This comparative approach not only helps us reconstruct linguistic history but also sheds light on migratory movements and cultural interactions that shaped ancient societies. Proto-Indo-European is reconstructed as a highly morphological language, characterized by a complex system of nominal and verbal inflection that reflects sophisticated grammatical organization. Here are additional details about its main linguistic characteristics. Proto-Indo-European is known for its elaborate system of grammatical cases. The eight reconstructed cases include Nominative, 
mainly used for the subject of a sentence or the predicate of the subject. Accusative, used for the direct object of a transitive verb. Genitive, indicating possession or relationship of a noun to another. Dative, indicating the recipient or beneficiary of an action. Instrumental, used to indicate the instrument or means by which an action is performed. Ablative, indicating origin, separation, or cause. Vocative, used to address or refer directly to someone or something. Locative, indicating location or position in relation to something. These grammatical cases are marked by specific endings added to nouns, reflecting precise grammatical relations within the sentence. Proto-Indo-European had three grammatical genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter. Nouns and adjectives agreed in gender with other elements in the sentence. For example, the definite article and adjectives agreed in gender with the noun they modified. The verbal system of Proto-Indo-European was highly developed, with verbs conjugated for person, number, tense, aspect, and mood. Verbs were inflected in different forms to indicate who is performing the action, how many are involved, when the action occurred, how it was performed, and the speaker's attitude towards the action. In terms of phonology, Proto-Indo-European had a diverse set of consonantal and vocalic sounds. This included occlusive consonants, such as slash p slash, slash t slash, slash k slash, fricatives, such as slash s slash, slash h slash, nasals, such as slash m slash, slash n slash, liquids, such as slash l slash, slash r slash, and semivowels, such as slash w slash, slash y slash. Additionally, Proto-Indo-European had a distinction between voiceless and voiced phonemes in its phonology. Proto-Indo-European had a system of tonic accentuation, where a specific syllable in a word received more emphasis or prominence. This accentuation could influence the phonological development of words over time. These complex linguistic characteristics of Proto-Indo-European reflect a sophisticated grammatical system that provides valuable insights into the evolution of Indo-European languages and their linguistic structures. The detailed study of these characteristics not only aids in the reconstruction of the ancestral proto-language, but also in understanding the linguistic and cultural roots of ancient Indo-European societies. The dispersal of proto-Indo-European speakers is a key phenomenon in the linguistic and cultural history of Eurasia. Linguistic and archaeological studies suggest that speakers of Proto-Indo-European spread across vast geographical areas, giving rise to the various branches of Indo-European languages we know today. One of the most widely accepted theories about the dispersal of Indo-European peoples is the Korgan hypothesis, proposed by Maria Jambudas in the 1950s. According to this theory, Indo-European peoples originated in the region of the Pontic-Caspian steppe, present-day Ukraine and southern Russia, around 4000 BCE. These people were nomadic pastoralists who used mound-shaped graves, korgans, to bury their dead. The theory suggests that speakers of Proto-Indo-European expanded from this region, migrating westward into Central and Western Europe, as well as eastward into Central Asia and South Asia. This migration and dispersal of Indo-European peoples resulted in the division of the proto-language into different linguistic branches. The major branches of Indo-European languages include Celtic languages, spread across Western Europe and the British Isles, including Irish Gaelic, Welsh, and Breton. Germanic languages gave rise to English, German, Dutch, 
Swedish, among other languages spoken in Northern and Western Europe. Italic languages include Latin, which gave rise to Romance languages such as Italian, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Romanian. Slavic languages spread across Eastern Europe, including Russian, Polish, Czech, Serbian, among others. Baltic languages, such as Lithuanian and Latvian, spoken in the Baltic states. Indo-Iranian languages gave rise to Vedic Sanskrit in ancient India and modern languages such as Hindi, Persian, and Kurdish. The diversification of Indo-European languages was influenced by various factors, including subsequent migrations, cultural interactions with local populations, effects of geographical isolation, and social and political changes over the centuries. These factors led to the development of different dialects and languages within each linguistic branch. The dispersal and diversification of Indo-European languages had a profound impact on the history and culture of the regions where these languages were established. Latin, for example, was the language of the Roman Empire and left a lasting legacy in the Romance languages of Europe. Similarly, Germanic languages significantly influenced the development of culture and society in Western Europe. In summary, the dispersal and diversification of Indo-European languages are a testament to the complex migratory and cultural history of ancient Eurasian peoples. These linguistic processes not only reflect the evolution of languages over time but also provide valuable insights into the history and interactions between different ethnic and cultural groups throughout human history. Indo-European languages have had a significant impact on global history and culture, profoundly influencing the societies where they were adopted and contributing to the dissemination of knowledge, trade, and cultural exchange worldwide. Below are some details about the impact and legacy of the most prominent Indo-European languages. Latin, as the language of the Roman Empire, exerted a lasting influence on Europe and beyond. After the decline of the Roman Empire, Latin evolved into Romance languages such as Italian, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Romanian. These languages retained many characteristics of Latin and became important vehicles for literature, science, philosophy, and religion in medieval Europe and beyond. The legacy of Latin is deeply rooted in European culture and education to this day. Ancient Sanskrit, a classical Indo-European language, played a fundamental role in the spiritual, literary, and philosophical development of South Asia. It is the sacred language of Hinduism and Buddhism and was used to compose important religious and philosophical texts such as the Vedas and the Upanishads. Additionally, Sanskrit profoundly influenced modern Indo-Aryan languages such as Hindi, Bengali, Gujarati, and Urdu. Sanskrit also contributed to the development of sophisticated linguistic and philosophical systems in ancient India. English, a Germanic language originating in England, became a global lingua franca due to the impact of the British Empire and, subsequently, the cultural and economic influence of the United States. English is widely spoken as a first language in many countries around the world and is the dominant language in science, technology, international trade, and popular culture. English has absorbed a vast vocabulary from other languages, including Latin, French, and Greek, making it a rich and flexible language for global communication. Beyond linguistic impact, Indo-European languages have contributed to cultural and intellectual development worldwide. They facilitated the exchange of ideas, trade, 
and the development of literature, philosophy, science, and technology throughout history. Indo-European languages served as essential vehicles for the transmission of knowledge and culture in many ancient and modern civilizations. In summary, the impact and legacy of Indo-European languages are evident in all aspects of human history. They shaped societies, expanded cultural boundaries, and contributed to the linguistic and intellectual richness of the modern world. The study of these languages not only reveals the common roots of humanity but also enriches our understanding of the diversity and interconnectedness of cultures over time. The Proto-Indo-European language family is much more than just a set of ancient languages. It represents a fundamental key to unraveling the history and evolution of human languages, as well as understanding the movements and interactions of civilizations over millennia. Let's delve even further into the main points about the importance and implications of Proto-Indo-European studies. Origins of Human Languages Asterisk The study of Proto-Indo-European offers us a privileged view of the origins of languages spoken by some of the earliest peoples of Eurasia. The reconstruction of this ancestral proto-language helps us understand how languages develop and diversify over time, reflecting the movements and migrations of prehistoric human populations. Migrations and cultural interactions asterisk the dispersal of proto-Indo-European speakers and the diversification of Indo-European languages are closely linked to ancient migratory movements and cultural interactions between different human groups. The study of these dispersion patterns allows us to reconstruct the historical events that shaped the linguistic and cultural landscapes of Eurasia. Evolution of Languages and Culture Asterisk By analyzing the linguistic characteristics of Proto-Indo-European and its evolution into different linguistic branches, we can trace not only the evolution of languages but also the evolution of Indo-European societies and cultures over time. Linguistic changes often reflect large-scale social, technological, and political changes. Linguistic diversity and global connections asterisk the Indo-European family is just one of many language families in the world, each representing a unique part of the global linguistic tapestry. Studying Proto-Indo-European helps us appreciate linguistic diversity and understand the deep connections between languages and cultures worldwide. Ultimately, the study of the Proto-Indo-European language family is not just an academic quest for ancient origins but a journey to understand the complexity and beauty of human languages and their historical and cultural implications. By exploring these ancient languages and their modern ramifications, we enrich our understanding of humanity and how language continues to shape and connect our lives in the contemporary world.